Joining me is James Morrow, host of the US Report on Sky News every Friday at 8 p.m. James, this is the idea that this guy doesn't have a health problem, which he says he does. He says he doesn't. That's clearly a joke. And the idea that he can keep serving as president for another six months, that's a fraud. Well, it's a fraud, Andrew, but it's been a fraud for some time now. I mean, I think it was just 12 days ago he got up and said, you know, I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying in this race. I'm in it to win it and all that. And then suddenly we have this very bizarre situation, which we've been over here, you know, this whole thing where suddenly he disappears with COVID, he goes to Delaware, he quits the race via a tweet and says, I'll talk about it later. And then he comes out and gives this very bizarre speech today. I thought it was bizarre because it didn't answer any fundamental questions. It did not deal with his health. It did not even deal with the politics. He just said, I'm passing the torch. And, you know, it was clear to anybody who was watching it that he was having difficulty even with an event in that incredibly controlled environment of the Oval Office with a teleprompter, with aides, with family, with everything else, you know, it was still, there were moments when he was having trouble getting through sentences. It's weird. And he was painted uh, orange. Uh, you know, you could see the little line under, you know, just yeah. there his column. It is, uh, his, uh, you know, it's, that is one sick puppy. And can you see him being replaced? Well, look, I actually think that there's every chance that before this term of office is out, Kamala Harris is president of the United States. And I think this for a number of reasons, not the least of which is that it actually makes sense strategically, I think, for the Democrats to run with Kamala Harris as the actual president. She gets all the advantages of incumbency. She's the vice president. There'd be no issue with that. But I think it's that Joe is too stubborn to uh, step down. I think the Biden family has a lot of things they want to secure, including a pardon for Hunter, before they go anywhere. But, you know, we saw the way things moved very quickly to the point where Joe Biden decided that he was going to have to pull out of the race because, as Nancy Pelosi said, we can do this the easy way or the hard way. Well, that's still on the table as far as I'm concerned. I suspect you're right. I mean, it's going to be overwhelming. Kamala Harris's best chance now of winning the election is to become president and go in with all the advantages of office. And when you see that, why not? Uh, it's just a question of his pride now. Uh, mm. But another thing, James, uh, Biden was apparently too sick with COVID or whatever he really has got or just too anti-Israel, we don't know, to welcome Israeli President Benjamin Netanyahu to Washington this week. Apparently we'll meet him later. But pro-Palestine protesters inside the capital of Washington gave Netanyahu a very heated reception, including stamping on the Israeli flag and also tearing down the American flag and burning it. Like I say, you know, you've said the same. Many of these protesters are against not just Israel, but the West. But I thought Netanyahu, in a speech to Congress this morning, our time, let them have it. Here he is. Well, I have a message for these protesters. When the tyrants of Tehran, who hang gays from cranes, and murder women for not covering their hair, are praising, promoting, and funding you, you have officially become Iran's useful idiots. But James, one more uh, short grab. I thought he put the context of the war in Gaza very well. Here he is. In the Middle East, Iran's axis of terror confronts America, Israel, and our Arab friends. This is not a clash of civilizations. It's a clash between barbarism and civilization. Many don't have a clue what river and what sea they're talking about. <laughs> they not only get an F in geography, they get an F in history. They call Israel a colonialist state? Don't they know that the land of Israel is where Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob prayed, where Isaiah and Jeremiah preached, and where David and Solomon ruled? What did you make of Netanyahu's speech to the U.S. Congress? Well, I thought it was pretty powerful stuff, Andrew. And I think that you just you missed my favorite bit there was when he was talking about going on campuses and seeing all these people with the gays for Palestine signs. And he said, <laughs> this is like seeing chickens for KFC, which I thought was a great line. But, you know, it underlines though, this bigger point. It's not just anti-Israel, it's anti-America, it's anti-freedom, liberal democracy, all of the things that we all enjoy, left or right. We saw that with that you know, unbelievable protest outside Union Station where they tore down the American flag and replaced it with a Palestinian flag. 
um, got into fights with the cops and all this sort of stuff. But we also saw recently that the head of Iran, the Iranian supreme leader, tweeted his support for the campus protests yep. here. And this comes, you know, in the context of decades of Iran and Qatar shoveling money into institutions uh, in Australia, in the United States, to create their own Middle Eastern study centers and create, you know, the environment where kids are taught from the very start to hate Israel. So true. Don't forget, of course, that China's also been uh, putting, uh, you know, funding Confucius Institutes in Australia, same sort of agenda, you know, pro, be uh, pro uh, a tyranny, really. Hmm. Uh, James Morrow, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it.